Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's live stream. So today we will be, uh, I will be working a little bit for, for Terex. I, to be honest, haven't done my part. And I think it's time that we uh, that I go out and I do a little bit of work for, for Terex. I'm gonna, in case you don't know, Terex is our, uh, the community around the channel's in-game squadron. You can see we have one here. Terex Extra Corp. There we go. I actually have a pending application. Say hello to our newest member, Delta 9R. There we go. Congratulations and welcome. Okay, so anyway, we are working on like trying to get our influence in various systems and we're gonna run over some of the basic of PGS so that you know what's going on. Um, they are in solo today, but we can move over. Uh, evil, yeah, so Terex is our faction in-game. So just as you can see here, if we go, we're in Shinrata that right now. We have various factions. There are various factions, and we have a faction, and we're working for that faction, trying to expand our influence, gain systems, take over stations, and eventually the whole bubble. Maybe not, but... <laughs> Could be working for today, and I'm also going to talk about, um, like how first of all you can participate if you want to, and what is expected of you, and most importantly what is not expected of you. And I will also be just giving a very quick overview of like what BGS is. We're gonna do all of that, but I just first before we do that, I just want to explain to some of you notices that I, I said the live stream was live, but it's not. Um very quick rant about youtube and and the things they're doing like probably not the stuff you're seeing but the behind the scenes to the whole creator dashboard um i don't want to spend too much time on it i don't want this to be my me sitting and ranting about something for like hours and hours but but i just quickly want to give you an overview of um of what is to come and i'm sorry of why this this okay it's just i'm a little annoyed with youtube at the moment I'll just quickly show you, and I've been very careful what I show here because some of it is a little sensitive, but that's probably okay. Um, this is the old dashboard, right? I could go in here and I could edit this. I could drag these different boxes around. A little spoiler there for an upcoming video, if you're interested. Um, and I have some basic statistics like increase in subscriber numbers and watch time and views. And I can get a brief overview of all the videos, how they've been doing in terms of likes to dislike ratios, that kind of stuff. See all the latest comments down here. I could set this up the way I wanted it. I set it up so I can have ready for public. When they are ready to publish them, they move up to schedule when they're ready to go live. And then eventually, eventually they will move over here automatically to the publishing when they're ready to go public. I like this interface, it was good. The new one looks like this. <laughs> First of all, as you can see, they're pretty much taking up like the center part of the screen with ads to their own videos like oh here's a passion for fashion why that's this does not belong on my dashboard and i can't edit this now what actually caused the problems today was the fact that they've introduced a new way of when you go when you make live streams so if i go here and i click go live you'll see that i'm taken over to this See, I have no upcoming streams, right? So I could potentially uh, go to if no. See, is it because I'm already streaming that it's confused? Okay, here we go. If I wanted to create, um, if I wanted to create a new live stream, right? I could take it as a copy of a previous one, which makes sense. I could copy all the settings from the last live stream over to the new live stream. That makes perfect sense. So let's just do that real quick. And just imagine that I wanted to make a new live stream. Copy and create. Oh, wait, it doesn't work. Okay, I just click that. Okay, there we go. So I'll make a copy of it. Um, and we wait and we wait and we wait. And it takes forever. And there we go. Now it's okay. So now we have a new copy. We can see the servers we need to stream to, and this is the secret key that nobody can watch because then they can stream to my channel. But I obviously I don't want to have the name of the previous live stream, so I'm going here to edit, 
and I would then edit the live stream and say, very, uh, very new live stream, something like that. I don't know. And I it copied everything over, but notice there's no way for me to save this. I can't close this window in any possible way to 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 save it. And if I wanted to set a schedule time, look at this. The the I mean, what is this? <laughs> I can't see the times that I'm going to schedule it for because the drop down menu is too narrow. The only way I can get out of this window now is to close down the fan and 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 go to something else. Anyway, rant over. Now we're going to play late. Um Let me just ask some quick questions. Thanks for the follows, by the way. Sorry for, for that. Uh, and hello to Picard and press you over there. Um, people saying it's not loading over on Twitch. Let's just quickly verify that the stream is running on Twitch. Yes, it is. I have it running on Twitch. Okay. So that's not the issue. Um, press, you can see it. Perfect. We have confirmation that it's working on Twitch. Um, do you have any tips for engineering? Because I am new to it. Actually, I'll, I'll just show you something here. If you're new to engineering and you want to get into it. So I'm building, I'm um, going to pitch this again. I'm building a, um, I'm building a site at the moment um, called EliteGuides.info. Um, I'll post a quick link for it here in, uh, in chat. If you guys are interested, this is still work in progress. Keep this in mind. It's essentially big letters on the top, work in progress. It's not a done site. I'm still working on it and stuff is still being ironed out, stuff is still missing, and it hasn't been, like, you could even see it up here, work in progress. It hasn't been, like, there's still typos and spelling mistakes everywhere, so keep in mind that this is still very much work in progress. But one of the latest things that's been added to the site is Engineering Unlock. I got in contact, you might remember that a guy called Fox, he put a guide up on Reddit, like, years back now. I got in touch with him and asked if I could take it over, and add it to uh, to the site here, and I've done that. So I've poured the whole thing over, and here is a step-by-step -step guide um, where you can see, okay, step one, unlock Felicia Farsier. Why do you want to unlock her? What do you need to do? Where do you need to go? And what do you need to collect? And it just goes through all the steps of all the like basic engineers in which order you should do it, what you should do, and then there's some optional ones down here at the bottom. Um, Really nice guide, and I'm really happy that he would allow me to put this up on the site here. So, anyway. Do we have any answers to you, to your poll? We are thinking about uh, in Hello Dave. I haven't totaled it up, but it seems like my, uh, my feeling was right that most players, they have a tendency to gravitate towards... Um, gravitate towards the like, private groups and solo play and then stay out of open, basically. We have... Hillbilly Butthead, <laughs> nice, over on Twitch saying, Astro, thanks for information um, regarding the rank grind. I'm now a happy Corvette owner. Congratulations. Okay, let's go ahead and let's run some... Um, let's run some missions for... Um, for Terex here. I'm just gonna quickly go into here it is. So here we have our public orders on um on our Discord, as you can see here, being posted almost every day by our faction planner uh crypto. And we can see here today we have high priority orders. Um, we need to boost Terra X, take up all the free influence, bounty hunting in a mini, or LP would likely be the fastest way to get influence. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing today. And I just want to try to explain kind of what it is that, maybe not why we're doing exactly what we're doing today. I mean, if you're proficient in BGS, you could probably guess it. I don't want to reveal too much of the hidden plans and stuff going on, but I'll just give you a quick rundown of what BGS is and how it works in case you're new to it. So 
I'm gonna jump in here to uh, to Inara, and I'm gonna take you guys on a little guided tour of BTS. Uh, uh, where is it? Squadron. Here we go. And you come with me over here. Okay. This is the. Um, oh, just quickly catch up on it again. More people having uh, cabin corvettes thanks to the frontier of uh, the Ferrisian ride. Okay, here um, we have the TerraX Astro Corp page on Inara. Here you can see all the systems we currently have are present in. We might not be controlling all of them, but at least we have a influence in those systems. And the job today is Bajono system that we're going to be uh, be working for today. Um, and as you can see here, here we are at uh, the highest influence in the system. So we have the majority of influence and we also own Thomason Station, the only station in the system, meaning that we are in fact the controlling faction in system. Um, but right now our, our uh, job is to try and like really solicitate our, our hold in the system. So we're going to try to be boosting up our influence in the system. Problem is, as you can see here, uh, especially if I zoom in like that, maybe it's easier for you to read then. Um, as you can see here, our uh, station is quite far out and we don't want to fly out there all the time. So flying missions back and forth between uh, um, Thomason Station is a little, well, it's a little annoying. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to go to some of the other systems that we own and then we're gonna collect bounty vouchers for our faction and then we're gonna fly into this system and then hand them in here and that should work then we should get the system influence in this system even though we have been working in other other systems now i don't think we have any active uh active expansions at the moment if i Don't think we do. Um, but basically, the whole idea with BTS is if we take our home system LP, for instance, which is one of the systems we'll be going in today. Um, actually, let's find a station system where we do not, where we are not the controlling faction. I don't think we're the controlling faction in CD, if I recall correctly. We have, we have a few smaller ones, but I do believe the controlling station is this one. Yeah. So right now, the controlling faction in this system um, is Bar Vision. These guys. Also, oh, that's the gate. These guys. Vision Network. These are the controlling faction in the system. Let's say we wanted to take over this station right here. Um, and thereby also taking system control. We would have to get into a conflict. And I can see, if we go up here, that we are both corporate but they are independent and we are federation. That means that we would go into a war with them. If we were both corporate and federation, um, then it would be a... Ele no, hold on, we're both corporate. Does this mean we go into election? I'm actually not 100% sure if that would be an election. But the point is we would have to engineer a war with them. You can see we've had a war with them before here, where we kind of matched influence. So right now, if we wanted to take system control, we would actually have to work for, for Vision Network. We would need to boost their influence up so their influence would, would match our influence here. And once the two influences match, we will lock in the war. You can actually see there's an election. Okay, you can actually see they are both corporate, so it would be an election. Because we have two here that are in an election at the moment because they're both corporate. So if we match influence with these with Vision Network, we would uh, go into an election, which is a conflict state. Uh, you have war, civil war, and election that are all conflict states. And then that election would then run for a slightly less than a week, I think. And the winner of the election would then gain one station from the other faction. So if we lost, we would most likely 
you most likely lose to this station here to uh, to vision network but if you won we would take this station from them and gain system access um elections you can't do combat missions in war you can do combat missions but election combat has no influence on uh, on that oh you actually set up a straw pool nice i'm gonna answer that how do you move to play Elite dangerous solo VP I'm not using a VPN. Okay. Never mind then. But that's the point. And then there's a whole lot where you begin to expand into other systems, but let's get some flying done and uh and let's kill some uh let's kill some NPCs. Now normally uh where's LP? There's LP. Gonna hit there and we gotta kill some NPCs. Show results should work. Ah, I hope so. Okay, folks are coming in slowly. I'll, we'll go back to the vote in a second here. Now, I have a quick question to ask you guys. Have any of you noticed um, any change in the sound? Like the microphone sound on this live stream? If you if you notice any difference, if it's just volume levels, I can adjust that. But if you notice any kind of in the uh, changes in the quality of sound in this live stream, more echo. Okay. Dongle can actually hear more echo. It should be a little more echoey, I think, because what I would do. Um, first time here sounds good to me. Sounds the same. Rest is fine. A bit echoes more. Yeah, okay. Normally before... Ah, I still have the landing gear down. Before I had my microphone basically here, just out of frame. Um, so the microphone would be like just between my keyboard and my monitor. And then sit pretty much like here. If you see me from the side, the microphone would be around here, and I would sit talk right into it. Problem is, the arm would cover up part of the screen. It was a little annoying. So what I've done now is I put the microphone over here, just outside of frame. It's like right here now. Oh, not touching it. Um, means it's a little bit further away, which should give a little bit more echo because of the room. But it's a lot more convenient to have it there. So if it's not too bad, then. Uh, then I might go with it, and I might try to see if I can do anything about trying to sound treat this room, but that's going to be difficult, I think. I can't actually, maybe I can turn up the compressor a bit. Where is the compressor? Uh. Nope, that's not the compressor, that is the balance. No, that is the balance. That's also the balance. Ah, I found it. I found the compressor. Hold on, give me a second. I'm just gonna... Gonna try to... Uh, to add a little bit of compressor here. I hope... There we go. Add it uh, about... I... Uh, went from five to seven now on uh on the compressor i don't know if that made any change at all <laughs> look at all the space behind me actually the most space is above me i have about four and a half meters to my ceiling Okay, let's actually just go to a resource extraction site and let's begin to kill some uh, some stuff. Slight echo, not enough to be annoying. Perfect. I'll keep it there then. It's a lot more convenient to have it there. But okay, can I can I show you guys? That's probably going to be a little difficult.
Maybe I can actually. Four and a half meters water tower, pretty much. Actually, you know what? Now this is this stream is turning into like getting sidetracked. Uh, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted this one, and then I just quickly want to go there and go there and then go there, like that. And now, if I go up here. And I just try not to bump the microphone because it's going to sound horrible for you guys. And I loosen this one. I should now be able to pan up. There we go. And as you can see, as we're panning up, it's quite a tall room. All the way up there. And I'm sitting down here. Hello. So as you can see, there is quite a bit See if I can get this thing into place again. Does this look right? It is high. <laughs> and as you might have, have seen, like there are shelvings over there on, uh, on the side of me, making it a little difficult to sound treat the room. Uh, I, I have to put something all the way up there, which is not that easy. Okay, I'm just gonna tighten this down again. There we go. Am I a little low? I'm a little low. Is that better? That looks better, I think. Okay, let's get back in game. There we go. Okay. Yeah, the IKEA light, <laughs> I know. <laughs> What kind of first-person weapons do you think would come? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I would expect they would kind of go with the same theme. If you look at what kind of weapons are available on ships. Oh yeah, background screen. Thank you. Uh, that one, that, no, that's not it. That one and filters and click, there we go. If we look at the kind of weapons that are already available, I would assume we just get those, but in like a handheld version. So there will probably be lasers. There will probably still be probably still be like normal, like shoot him with like accelerate small small pieces of metal to high velocities kind of weapons, um, and maybe also some more advanced ones like I. I like rails, maybe plasmas, maybe not. Oh, this is a good extraction site. It's in a very, uh, very empty area, so there's not that many rocks to crash into. I mean, there's actually a few. Okay, let's just find something to shoot at. Oh, space cow. I don't think the space cow. No, the space cow is mining. I don't think the event there. Uh, Dong Lam in solo right now. We have a lot of phantoms. That looks like a wing of... Yeah, a phantom and a python. Is that a phantom phantom python wing? I think it is. That's good. That's sort of fun. Okay, let's uh Yeah, shield boost all you want. Let's get that bottom laser firing again. There we go. And you're just gonna Fire 
First one down, switching over to the next one. Okay, here we go. Is that to adjust my pips a little bit? He's a lot more maneuverable this time. Uh, I have extended back on my small cannons uh, just to give them a little bit more longevity so I don't have to synthesize that much. Come on. Hold on, the space cow is being attacked. What is attacking the space cow? Oh, there's still a python here. I think it's, yeah, it's the, probably the python that's doing the more majority of the damage to the space cow. I'm not sure if we saved it. I think that fortunately that was another space cow. I don't think that was the one that took damage. No, because we would have to scan. I think we failed in saving the space cow. And I think that dropship there is... It's a good guy. Oh, did I put collectors on this and did I put take those off? I think I took those off. Yeah, I did. He is wanted. Oh, he uses PAs. Then he needs to die. Oh, you're signed up for the cryo scramblers as well, Dungalora. Hold on, I need to see how far along I am for those. Beautiful. Okay, what's next? We have an assault ship. Oh, I need to check uh, to check my lasers here. Mm, what am I doing? Galactic powers. Thanks for the follow on Twitch. I'm only two weeks and four days, so I need to wait a little before I do my merits. Oh, but the point is, you can see here, as we're doing this, 
we are collecting quite a bit of bounties uh, for Terra X. And we can then take that bounty and then go over to the system next door and sell it. I think that should give us influence over there as well. We have an assault ship. Are you sure? Demon Ripper? I'm pretty sure that it was, at least it was in the orders that we should bounty hunt here. Only in combat zones. But that confuses me because Crypto put in the orders that we should bounty hunt here. I assumed he wanted us to then sell it in the other system. Uh, maybe game sound is a little lower. I did do some adjustments. I can turn it up a bit if that helps. Try that. Yeah, pretty... Uh, I think I'm doing it okay, Robert. Uh, that's At least that's the way I understand it as well. I'm pretty sure at combat zones, at conflict zones, are tied to the system you're in. This is not a conflict zone, this is a resource extraction site. So because we're just collecting bounties in here, we can then move over and sell in the next system. Oh, we're far away, let's get closer again. And um, Alliance Enforcer and Alliance Enforcer, so they are obviously police. Yeah, exactly. Bounty Hunt and LP turn in in, in Bergeron also. That's what we're doing. Okay, anything bigger to shoot at? We have two space cows. Oh! Was that... Yeah, all the space cows here. We have a fast. Good guy fast. Bad guy fast. That looks like a bad guy to me. Flying alone. Yep. Do you have anything of value? Nope. <laughs> oh, well, thermal overload there. That's not good. I thought you gain influence once you sell the bounty bounties in whatever system you hand it. Yeah, you do. That's exactly how it works. So right now we want influence in the system next door, but it's not a very good system to do missions or anything else in for that matter. So we're just running bounties in LP and then we're going to hand them in over in the system where we actually want the influence. And then we're going to say, I swear, officer, I killed them in this system. <laughs> What's in the box today? Vodka, Lavian, Brandy, and just tea. So in the it's the down to earth astronomy mark today, and it's the usual. <laughs> hey, more stuff to kill. Ooh.
Oh, he just launched the fighter. Nah, you know what? I don't want to bother with the fighter. There we go. A little ram goes a long way. And a big ram. Almost took down his shield. If he wasn't boosting with his uh, shield still banked right now, he would be dead. Push him around. Keep pushing him. Keep pushing him. Okay, while we still have something to shoot at, I'm just going to fire off a shield cell bank and then use him to cool myself down. Just have a quick look at the straw poll just to see. So we have of the people voted so far 21 votes, and we have about 47% saying they play in private groups. We have 28% saying they play in solo, and about 24% saying they play in open with some very various there. Okay. Um Good evening, Starlost. Any thoughts on what base building would mean in terms of gameplay and goals within Elite? I think it's going to be very industry focused. I think it's going to be revolving around um, like mining materials out of planets, like on a more passive thing that you have to sit and maintain. I think there'll be a little bit more micromanagement in it. But I think we're going to begin to see us being able to actually manufacture some of the commodities that we right now can only gain by buying them on the market and selling them to the market. Um, I think we're going to be able to manufacture these, sell them on the market for a profit. And that's going to open a whole new way of making money in Elite. I think so. Obviously, I don't know, but that's my guess. Got ourselves an Asp Exploder. Instant the chaffs. Why do I guess manufacturing? Because it's something that would work really well both as a solo player, you could set up your own small manufacturing plant and, and produce something simple. Something that wouldn't require too much maintenance. Um, maybe you would have to ferry a few materials between planets if all the raw materials you needed wasn't available on one planet. You might have to fly some of it around between different planets. But it is something that you could easily manage on your own. But you could also set up something huge and complicated that could hopefully be man maintained by a squadron with like multiple planets in a big big network and you would have to sit and ferry all this stuff around to keep and like blah, blah, blah. i don't know <laughs> something like that i think would be really fun um i've done something similar back in uh, in eve online when i played that a long time ago where we were just there was just two players we set up a small supply chain in uh, in low security area and it was a ton of fun. Like we spend our, our our evening sitting and 
flying things back and then i was in charge of like, like sitting and doing all market orders for the materials we couldn't gather ourselves and setting up the supply chains and he would then be in charge of actually getting the stuff uh, out again and getting it sold so we could get some money back in uh, and it was a ton of fun and i would love to do something like that again firing missiles really that could change power play. it could but maybe i don't know how they would implement it and if the planets could then have something like a imagine like a very basic version of uh, satisfactory or factorial where you could set up small supply chains or factories on the on the surface that would make elite like so much more than it is now exactly as dutch design says you would be building a corporation and having a squadron to support it okay what's there to shoot at Ooh, clipper clipper is most likely up to no good unless he's core hunting oh elite clipper <laughs> yes no Stop chasing the asp. Oh, he's firing hatchbreakers after the asp. And he has no chaff. Best kind of clippers. But he has just sell banks, but they're not gonna help him very much. Uh, Matt, yes, that is exactly what I'm doing. Yes, when the when the NPCs are firing chaff, I'm deselecting them, untargeting them, basically, to ensure that I can just use my weapons as fixed weapons, so I can keep firing on them, even though they are firing chaff. Making a... I can't use my, uh, my multi-cannons, not as easy at least, because obviously they, I, they you need to lead, and it's difficult to lead without having a target uh, to shoot at. Without having the target indicator where I need to shoot. But since the beam lasers are hit scan weapons, um, I can just I can easily hit with them because you just need to point at the ship and fire. Okay, we have a gunship out here who is being shot at by another gunship. No, okay, there we go. He died. Or oh, he just ate a lot of missiles. I don't know. But this guy is about to join the fight, and we're gonna not allow that. This guy is not clean. The other guy that was being shot at, he was clean. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Someone just spammed proxy mines everywhere. I think it's the clean guy here who just proxy mined everybody. <laughs> okay. We have another gunship. Wow. Uh, here. Head back towards the center. <laughs> there we go. He's wounded. So far, the shields are holding up. It was really only when we, when we were using this ship as a, uh, a sort of battering ram and trying to kill the anaconda by ramming it that we took some shield damage. Hello, we're on Twitch. Welcome. Charge my shield. No, no, it's okay. I have plenty of shields, about 
5,000 effective hit points in it right now. Probably a little bit more now. So, it's okay. I don't need to worry. As scout, but he's far away. I don't want to fly. And he's mining, so he's clean. Vulture. He's fairly close. If he's wounded, we can take him. Uh, Twitch link. Yeah, hold on. I'll get it. Just gonna take this guy down. I'll get you a link. Oh, he is... No, 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 he's not. He's chasing a space... He's chasing a... He's chasing one of the cows. Can't have that. Oh. Shield, I mean, the shields of the vultures always surprises me. They are surprisingly good on NPCs. But if I recall correctly, oh no, he, he's he's shield boosting. Come on, get those shields off. There we go. If I recall correctly, normally then the hull is then made of like wet newspaper. Yeah, look at that. There we go. He's gone. We we'll just get that twitch link for you real quick. Go. There we go. Oh, there's another clipper. Oh, hold on. This is gonna be fun. Get him on at 90 degrees. No, you don't. Ah, oh, he managed to dodge me. Since when did the NPCs dodge a ram? That's new, I've never seen them do that. Yeah, 110k for the Vulture wasn't bad. Thanks for the follow over on, uh, on Twitch. What do we have here? He's running from something. Stay here, criminal scum. I'll, I'll use him to get a little bit of shield back. He launched the fighter. Oh, I didn't go quick enough with my lasers there. Let's cool ourselves down real quick. Fast, deadly fast. Where are we at? Of bounties, one of the half million. That's not too bad.
Oh, uh, he's not targeting me. Come on. Full speed, full speed, full speed. And I missed. It's typical, isn't it? Okay, he's moving forward. Okay, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way then. Take down his shields. Deselect the target. Not doing that much damage out of three kilometers. Let's get a little bit closer. He's chaffing. And he's shield boosting, god damn it. <laughs> he is annoying. There we go, shield is down. He's gone. He's not gonna get away from this one. And pop. Elite fast. Every day is a school day, exactly. So close. Should we try to play a little bit with this, this guy's target his engines and see if we can uh, can do some damage to them before we kill him? Oh, he is maneuverable. And I think his chaff is gone. Yeah, we're not going to damage his engines at all. After we deselected him as a target. Just gonna rip him apart then. We're gonna start FA off training. I'm not planning to do it anytime soon. If there was planning to do something regarding Thargoid combat, but I don't know. I have other challenges I want to do first. A little python. Oh, mining python. Okay. Fair enough. Collect a limpid. We have all the proxy mines again. Diamondback Exploder. And gone. Destroyed. 
There we go. Nice. Keel back. He's probably not a PP ship. It's not a vulture. They were quite profitable before. Let's take another one then. Everyone liked the stream. It helps D2AE with the YouTube algorithms. <laughs> Warrenstein, thanks a lot for the donation. And he is absolutely right. The YouTube algorithm loves when people like live streams. So I like it if you do it too. Because it's really going to help a lot. And again, Warrenstein, thanks a lot for, uh, for the donation. It's awesome. Nice, we almost got his shield there. So we can't get the shield down here. Ah, if we could actually hit him, that would help. Okay, shield cell banks are being fired. But no! Come on. Give him more laser. There we go. And now just cut through that paper armor. Oh, somebody's in trouble. There is a courier. Oh, courier. Shooting up a miner, mining python. You know what, we gotta go for this courier. He's also part of the same wing, but he's just in a little bit better position for us right now. Expert courier. Spelt him. And looks like he has a. They have a diamond back with them as well. If they often fly backwards, that requires that they're chasing me. They're not necessarily chasing me. And they didn't even care. What is he doing all the way out there? Come on. Get back here. <laughs> uh, I think that... Where's the last ship in that wing? Is that it? Okay, let's try it, just for fun. And we're not gonna go full speed, we're just gonna give it like, I don't know. We can probably go like 200, so let's... Yeah, 250 maybe. We're gonna go fly the assist off, flip it around, and then try to kill him like that. He can at least keep up with us right now. slow down a little bit see now he's flying away from me that's no good come back here not gonna let him get his shield back and his fighter's gone as well. When do we get to see a new flight controls? I have no idea. I was hoping sometime in December, but 
it might be later. I don't really know. Python being attacked. Oh, that was that uh, diamond bag I saw before. Good evening, Andres. No conda. Nice. Called the fist. <laughs> Let's try not to just ram him to death this time. But flight control to the buy. I bought a um, Verpool Constellation Alpha and one of their throttles as well. But it was on pre-order, so I don't know when exactly they're gonna ship it. Why was he just sitting there? Just sitting still with showing me his belly right in front of me as he was firing chaff. Yes, but... I like that, look at that. But boop. Boop him a little bit more. Push him around. See, even though he's chaffing, he's so close that I can still hit him. I think so too, uh, Prezi. That is probably one of the best hotels you can get your hands on. Oh, there's another anaconda. And he has friends with him. Dangerous Anaconda with two Imperial Eagles. Perfect. Okay, let's start by getting some of those Eagles down because they can be quite annoying. Um, I am a little low on shield, so I need to find something to cool on pretty soon. But let's just get this Eagle down to start with. And then we'll take the shield afterwards. There we go, that's one Eagle. Where's the other eagle? There it is. You know what? I need uh, I need to shield up a little bit, so I'm just gonna take this guy and uh, do a double handing thing here. Oh, forgot to have my lasers pointed correctly there. That's not good. Okay, he's chaffing. Don't want to de-target him right now, but we have plenty of shields again, so... Okay, we got his shields there. Come on, one percent. Oh, he's exploding. Okay, almost two hundred thousand on that one. Oops, that was the eagle. Yeah, come closer, little eagle. Hello, creepy over on Twitch. Where are we at? Two and a half million, that's pretty good, I think. Oh, 
Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Robert looking for high grades on the way. Oh, yeah, we have a wounded deadly exploder. Diamondback explorer. Hello, Josh. Is that corrosive multi cannon effect that I see? Yes, it is. It is definitely corrosive. It's not really necessary on the smaller ships, but it does do a huge difference when it comes to the larger ships, um, like the Anaconda. Oh, there's something bigger. That's the guy scanning me, so he's most likely wounded as well. Clipper. I love Clippers. And Clipper has a friend, it seems, or he's shooting at someone. Okay, he's just fighting someone. Look at all those maneuvers. We will use the Clipper to boost our shields again. We're down to one ring, so we better do something about it. Oh, that's a big rock. Oops. All pips to weapons. Get nice and close. Shields will bank off. Lasers off. And no, that's not good. Okay, we did manage to keep it in check anyway. Thanks for the shield, you may now explode. Yeah, night vision might be uh, be useful here as the as this is moving into the darker side, I think. Uh mm, We have vulture. Oh! Space cow in need! Let's get some weapons off that space cow. Catch up to him, catch up to him. There we go, that's one. No! Was that the space? No, the space car is still there. I think we managed to get the majority of the weapons off the space car. And one more eagle. On. There we go. In your time playing, have you seen Frontier double the rank for the Imperial Superpower? Uh, yes, and it was before Horizons, <laughs> so about four years ago now. That's why if you don't have that Federation rank, 
do it now because this opportunity may never come again like ever maybe in four years oh well within four years it would be time to do uh, it could potentially be uh, be empire again I don't actually think they doubled the rank, but they lowered the requirements to buy ships. So you could suddenly buy the ships with a lower rank. Um, so I don't think they actually doubled the increase, but there was something similar. And he chaps. Exactly. Do your ranks now with fets because double double XP is good XP. <laughs> Bought 10 corvettes. Okay, that's maybe a little excessive, but... Oh well, guess you gotta be sure, right? I mean, even though you might say, oh, I'm so far off getting the corvette. Get the rank for it now and... Yes, you might not need it for quite a while, but then you have the rank and it's going to be so much less of a hassle when... Oh, there we go. So much less of a hassle when you get uh, get to actually buy the Corvette because then you don't have to do the rank then. And if you have the time, as... Um, uh, who was it? almost gone someone said that they would push for admiral uh now and you could do that if you have the time because who knows maybe they will use those rank for something someday what's the duration on the coronation was that doing the coronation of El yeah i think it was i think it was uh what do we have scouts Is Hashmer's sites better than Thargoid Scouts for combat rank? No. If you have a good ship that's designed to kill scouts, <coughs> by the way, I have a video on it, then... Hold on, I'm not killing clean scouts here, but the clipper I'm killing, then it's definitely, um, definitely better. The difficult part now is finding the scouts. You can still find them down in the Pleiades sector in bulk, where you can get quite a bit, and each scout counts as, a, as an elite kill. Um, so you can definitely still farm them down in, um, in the Pleiades sector. No, no, don't ram him Astro, don't amp him. Kill him normally, save your shields. Oh, if he's just gonna sit there, that's that's okay with me. What's best in general for combat rank? Um, if you don't like to kill scouts, what you can do is you can go into compromised nav beacons in an anarchy system. That's usually really, really good. Because they are generally you get a lot of high combat rank small ships. So small ships with high combat rank, which is ideal when it comes to hunting um when it comes to hunting combat ranks. Yeah, so exactly as people say, compromise nav beacons, preferably in the in anarchy systems if you can find it. And then Thargoid Scouts killing is also an option. Depending on what type of combat you like. Conda. Deadly Conda. How are we doing for shield seal banks, actually? Uh, well, why are both of them online? They shouldn't be online. Apparently they are. Oh, 
Okay, well, in that case, we still have five, so let's go. Chaffing, but we're so close that we can just keep having him targeted. We're still getting quite a few hits in. Just push him around here. See? This is a bad position to be in. And he managed to boost out of it. Okay. Conda go. <laughs> Problem is by corrosive multicat in the south of ammo. That's annoying. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, I know it's out of ammo, but I think we're going to be heading back pretty soon. Should we just synthesize just for that one cannon? Where are we at? Money wise, just past 3 million, that's pretty good, I think. And that goes to Shield Sill Bank. Nice. Uh, Python? Sure. Why not? He's clean. What do we have here? Deadly fast. Deadly wounded fast. Oh. Hello. And... Come on. Explode. There we go. Dropship. Just go to like 4 million, I guess. 
We should be pretty good. <laughs> if they should buff credits from bounty hunting, it could definitely do with that increase. Yes, I agree. And remember Carlos, yes, Carlos is there, hiding behind the hologram of the enemy ships, just to protect us, so nothing bad will happen to us. Who's scanning me? Not him. And Asp Exploder is scanning me. Oh, he's wounded by Terra X. Bye bye. I love the sound of the engines from the ASP. Okay, now it looks like the other small multi cannon is out. And the main multi cannons are sort of running out of ammo as well. Um, I think we have enough for one more ship, maybe. Only if there was actually something here. Oh, dropship. No ammo, no problem. If I could hit him. Save my multi cannon ammo until the shield is down. Which should be pretty soon. Especially if he wasn't ugh, firing all those shield cell banks. Okay, I'm gonna use my multi cannon just to prevent him from getting his shields back with the shield cell banks. There we go. And then finish him off with the multi cannons. Okay. He's using PAs. That could be a that could be a problem. Let's see here. That's just for good measures because wait for that to be done. And then cool our ship with our lasers while we fire off a shield cell bank. All the heat should be mitigated now. In case you don't know this like Plasma Accelerators is this build's one weakness. It's facing damage and PAs. So that's why when I... S Didn't I fire a shield cell bank? When I saw him... Um, when I saw him beginning firing PAs, I decided to boost with a shield booster, a shield cell bank, because I didn't want to, to risk anything. Yeah, all the big multi cannons are out, I know. We'll take him down with the lasers. Go 
good. We got the shields down. Do I think Frontier would require max superpower rank? To no, because I don't think the fleet carriers is gonna be faction specific. They might, they might make faction specific versions in the future that requires the higher ranks. But the one we're gonna get here next year, I don't think that's gonna require any ranks. We can use our corrosive. And, uh, let's just fire off another shield cell bank. Okay, he got his shields back online. Oh, it's taking forever without the multi cannons. Yeah, exactly. I think we need to begin to do some more ramming tactics here. So close, though. I'll use the lasers just to take down his shield, and then we'll begin to try and ram him a bit more. Or I could just synthesize. I have the materials for it. So much clutter in the middle of the screen right now. Firing shield cell banks. Hopefully, we can overpower them with the lasers. Seems we can't. This would be a lot easier if I just synthesized, but now I want to try and do it without uh, without the big multi cannons. Got a little bit of a ram off there. Ah, oh, he boosted there. Just gonna keep the corrosive effect on him. There we go, got a little bit of a ram there. I think. Did that push us over 4 million? No, it didn't. But we're gonna head out and sell. So, just gonna quickly get the system name. Come on, there we go. And it shouldn't be too far away. What else? Hold on, please tell me, is this system... Does this system even have a big station before I go here and I cut her? Oh, that's not the system. What's going on? It does. Okay, good. I just didn't want to go to the system and then realize we can't go there, actually. Thanks for the follow on Twitch, sir, sir. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's 25. That's... <clears throat> we're gonna see we can't find something to do on our way out there anyway.
What's the result of the straw poll? Let's see. We got to 36 votes and stuff haven't moved much. It's still around 25% to say that they're mostly plain open. Good, Andreas. Remember to hit the like button. Thank you very much. Do we have an FSD booster on board? I do. I think the total jump range of the ship is 27. Not amazing, but for a big heavy combat ship, it's not bad. Hold on, I'm just gonna, I just got an idea. I might actually be able to get the micro. No, I probably can't. I have to put it up and point down, I guess. I don't know. I'm gonna experiment with that. I was considering trying to move the microphone higher up. Maybe that's gonna get it closer. I don't know. But before we go, we're just gonna quickly drop into the nav beacon. Think it's off? No, no, it should be online. Yeah, there we go. Booster is online. Everything is online now. It was off before when I had my weapons deployed. Whee! Loop of shame. Or loop of correction, depending on. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, if I got 27 with the booster off, that would be amazing on a cutter with a combat fit. No, not a message. It's called a victory lap. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, we do actually have some high grades. Is it just somewhat in the direction of the station? Let's we'll start by pointing ourselves towards the station. Loop or fly how you want, exactly. Oh, hold on. It's always so annoying to have those systems there on the list. It's not quite in the right direction. So I think I'll skip it. Um, plan to go on a long trip away from the bubble. Do you think that Frontier will come out with another community event before next year? No. I think that everything exciting that's going to happen in Elite this year has already happened. The rest of the year, Frontier is going to be working on getting that January update ready. Uh, so I don't think we'll see any um, big community events. Uh, no interstellar initiatives. Maybe there will be a small community goal. Like a normal community goal, but I don't think we'll see anything um, too exciting for the rest of the year. And probably not before the first week of next year either, because I think a lot of people would probably like use the fact that you get, uh, at least if you have uh, like the, 30, the 31st and the 1st off at work, then I think a lot of people will also take like the rest of the week off to get that extra weekend, to get that long weekend. Um, to get two full full weeks of, uh, of vacation. So, um, oh yeah, there is that one thing, the celebration thing. 
Hold on. Where was that? I complete. I was looking at it before the stream and just completely forgot. There is the one thing that's gonna happen. Um, we can actually look at it while we are um, while we're flying up there anyway. So they're doing a small celebration, small community event. Actually, I completely forgot. Sorry. Um, that they're celebrating that Elite is five years old. So there will be a small community goal, which is going to be a trade community goal, where you need to give one of these things, basically like animal meat, fish, fruit and vegetables, beer, labian, brandy, <laughs> fireworks, and whiskey. <laughs> it's going to be a Christmas dinner, right? We're going to be frying a Christmas dinner into that system. Um, starting on the 12th, ending on the 18th. And if you take part, you will get the Cobra Mark III iridescent gleam paint job for the Cobra. Nice free paint jobs. And they have this really weird thing here. Um, where is it? Here we go. By taking part in the anniversary community goal, commanders will be awarded a cargo bay full of credits. What? What is a cargo bay full of credits? Hold on, I actually asked them over on uh, Twitter. I don't think they have applied yet, have they? I would be surprised if they're replying to messages right now. No, I haven't gotten any replies from them yet on what that is. <laughs> Thank you, Don Galora. Um, but yeah, that is actually that's actually the only thing that's gonna happen, I think. Up until the 18th. I don't know, however, that is really interesting. What is a cargo bay full of credits? Starting on the twelfth, which is in two days. Right into the eighteenth. So I might actually have to dust off my trade cutter and begin to um, It's hardly a billion, probably not But I mean Just drop off one load and get a free Cobra paint drop. Oh, well, that's a fair deal. I think Right and I mean it does look good combat as well did i miss something oh, okay you can also deliver deliver bounty vouchers oh you know what guys what you can do we could actually have uh, you could actually start already now because we know we have to deliver bounty vouchers so we could actually start in the system now and begin to collect uh, bounty vouchers. Right? Let's just jump in game. And we're gonna overshoot. No, we're not. Oh, it's right around the corner. How nice. It's two jumps. So we can kill it. And there's actually plenty of um, of ringed planets, so there should potentially be some decent zones there. And if we can just collect bounty vouchers, and then when the whole thing starts, we can just do a massive dump right at the beginning. That might actually be quite fun. I have a few fines. Oops. Should probably pay those off at some point. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> I like your way of thinking, Andreas. Since credit needs zero cargo space, it must be an infinite amount of cargo on infinite amount of credits. <laughs> I mean, I spent, what, about an hour, I think, in the conflict zone today, maybe a little bit more, maybe an hour and a half, and managed to collect, like, 3.9 million credits in bounty vouchers. And what you could also, if you really want to get yourself prepared, what you do is you park your combat ship there, and then you spend all day just like grinding up credits and the last thing you do before the events start is you take your, your your trade ship and you go out and you fill it up with like some basic material that's easy to find so not like labian brandy but probably something like fruit and vegetable vegetables you can get that everywhere i think fill your ship up with that and have that ship parked there with a full cargo hold <laughs> and when the event starts you dump you dump all the cargo and um had in the bouchy vouchers. Just gonna take a quick uh, dive into the uh, into gravity well here. Might have dived a little bit too deep there. Yeah, definitely went in too deep there. It also depends if it's going to be two community goals or if it's going to be one. Yeah, I would think so too, because how do you balance trade and combat in one community goal? No, I like the Cobra. One billion payout for Xmas. I doubt it's gonna be that much. Maybe if you really work hard for it, maybe you can get up there, but I don't, don't think I have a... <laughs> It might be higher than what we usually see on community goals, but I don't think it's gonna be like billions of credits. When we when we fly feet casual, we have to store cargo on them. We don't know. And we're just going to check before we hand in that this station is in fact owned. Yes, it is owned by Terra X Astro Corp. Can I pay it off here? Oh, I actually can. And redeem all bounty vouchers. And there we go. 3.8 million credits handed in for Terrax. That should hopefully help us along. We can begin to soak up some of that uh, additional influence. Just quickly look at what's the status in the system. We're doing quite good both in economy and security in the system. We have over 50% influence. 
That's higher than it was on uh, an Inara, wasn't it? Just check. No, okay, Inara is updated. I was just looking at it over here. It is, in fact, updated. But yeah, Outbreak. Oh. How do I read the influence tab? Like... Yes, I will write in the faction contribution channel, so you guys are actually posted the faction contribution now. Uh, 3.8 mil... Um, bounty... Handed in... In... Not that system. Uh, what was the name? The system again. The system name was Bajano. In Bajano for Terra X, and post that in faction contribution, so other people can see what's been done, and it's gonna help the it's gonna help the community managers to figure out how much work has been done, that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's been posted. Um, you said somebody asked how do I view the influence tab, like like. This tab, it's just there. You can go into a faction and we can see, well, what's our status? Well, we are in an economic boom. The colored bars, um, they have like an indication of how how well our uh, our faction is doing. So right now we are in boom and our economy is in boom, as you can see here on the top bar. And depending on where it is, we will then move down. We will then get either good or bad economy states or good or bad security states based on that. So if you drop down into the red, we could go down into lockdown or into pirate attack or something like that. But as long as we keep for instance up at the blue, you can see here we're gonna get pretty close to the civil liberty, um, the civil liberty one here, which is, is often pretty good. And we don't want to get into civil unrest. That means people are not happy. And same thing with the economy. It depends which state you're gonna get into. And same thing. You can see here's another factory boom. The faction here that has no states at all at the moment. And here we have one in outbreak. So you can see here their economy is not that good. Their security is okay, but the economy is not good. And that's what's caused the outbreak. Apparently. But it's all this stuff that the faction planners are doing behind the scenes. Like they're sitting there, they're looking at all the system, not just the systems we are in, but also our neighboring systems. See how things move around. Is there things we need to be aware of? Is the people who are beginning to stage an attack on our system that we need to defend ourselves against? Is there potential new systems we might want to get our hands on? How do we get in there? We need to make room for ourselves because you can only have seven factions in a system. So you can see here, we have one, two, three, we should have seven here already, four, five, six, seven. Yes, there are seven factions in here. So right now it wouldn't be easy for someone to move into this system because they, they, they can't get in as an eight faction. There is like a, a, a workaround with some, um, with some special states you can get into that allows you to go in. But the normal way in would be through an expansion and that you would need a system that has less than seven states. So if somebody wanted to get in here, they would have to find a non-native faction. You can see these three here, they are all called something something, something with with uh, Bajono, meaning they are native to the system. So they can't be kicked out because this is their home system. This one, however, um, better than that Interstellar, these guys are not native to the system. So these guys can be kicked out. 
Um, so if we wanted to, we could kick these guys out of the system. Or if someone else wants to get into the system, they could kick Bellanet out. They could kick uh, Green Party out here because they're not native to the system either. Um, and the way they would do that is to begin to drop their influence in the system. When their influence drop down below, I think it's two and a half percent, then they have a chance of going into retreat. And if the retreat carries through, if nobody managed to push them up above that two and a half percent influence, then the retreat will carry through and they will run, run out of the system because they have so little influence. Um, but all that planning and settling and, and meddling with that is, that's what BGS is and that's what the faction planners are doing. Now, if you're interested in that, we have some very, very skilled people who can definitely teach you a lot more about this than I can. And if you don't want to bother with all that and you just want to say, you know what, I actually just want maybe some guys to fly with, or just have some daily missions basically, then you can join the Discord that I think Don Laura has just linked. Thank you. And over there you will see daily orders posted every day. And then you can go and see, okay, so just like it today, I went in and I looked. So what's the high priority orders today? Okay, we need to in we need to increase our influence in the system to kind of solidify that to make sure we, we got that locked in nice and firmly. Um, so I just went and, and did some missions and casual combat, went over here, sold the, uh, sold the bounty vouchers and I helped the faction. So it's really depends on what kind of engagement you want. If you just want to know from time to time, I just want to run some casual missions and you want to kind of have a purpose while you're doing them other than just, well, it could be fun. Then by all means, you're more than welcome. And if you want to dive in a lot more into it and begin to really understand the inner mechanics of why is uh, why are we doing this right now plenty of opportunities for that as well um can we expand humanity into non-inhabited systems not at the time not at this point no yes exactly and that's actually something that you that we've been doing a lot in the past um you can actually see here if we just quickly pull up uh inara and we take our home system lp look at this i pull you over here so here we have the system stats on actually let me just move the system on the other side so i don't block what we have to look at so here we have lp as you can see here and here we can see that the systems the closest systems in range look at that seven 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 there's one there with eight and then we have all the way out here at six where did it go? There we go. All the way out of 18 light years. That's the first system we have. Herodact. Where there's no seven. Uh, that's less than seven. Right? So there. Um, people could jump in. And then otherwise. It's pretty much just seven or eight. All the way down. So right now. This system is the only one. Within 20 light years. Which is the normal attack distance. You can go. This one is the only system within 20 light years where people could potentially use that as a staging system to attack our home system. Um, so because that's one of the things that we did pretty early on was we just began to lock down our local area. Because this means if people want to get in and try to attack our home system and get a get their own faction in, they could of course just do it using one of the, the factions that already exists. But if they wanted to come in to, to our core systems and try to begin to, to get their own faction in, they would have to begin to clear systems and get those out as I begin to, to force factions out so they could get in and take their place from retreats. Um, but obviously, that's some of the things that the faction plans are keeping an eye on is if there's any of our systems in our vicinity that needs to be patched up or if there's anyone in, in in risk of retreating out, opening up a spot that could potentially be a staging system for an attack. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on other than just like what I did today was just like, okay, mindlessly, what do I need to do? Okay, I need to kill NPCs. I need to sell it there. Go, do it. Um, and yes, we are very close to Shinrata. We are like one or two jumps. I mean, I have two jumps in my Corvette, uh, which has 27 light years. So... We are like less than 50 light years from Shinrata, so you were really, really close if you want. It's a nice, uh, pretty nice location. Uh, so yeah, easy to get to and the system is not bad and we're beginning to get some pretty, uh, pretty good systems, I think. 
But again, yeah, if you're interested in the BGS, then uh, you are more than welcome uh, to join the Discord server. There's a link in the description below, and it's also been posted in chat a couple of times. And when you get over there, just read the message that you will get from the welcome bot, and it will tell you everything you need to know on how to sign up and what you need to do. And uh, that's it. And if you're in doubt, just grab a hold of, well, anyone over there or one of the moderators, myself included, and we'll get you set up. But yeah. Cool. Hopefully. Hopefully that should be... Uh, that should be a little bit more clearer for people what BGS is if you're newer to the game and haven't been, been diving into that uh, that part of the game. Okay, just jump in here and see how close we actually are to Shinrata. You can see there's our home system where we are and here's Shinrata. So right now I'm 35 away from Shinrata, pretty much next door. Okay, what time is it? I think it's time for me to um, to call it for uh, for today. I really hope you enjoyed the stream today. If you did, remember to go down and uh, give it a like. Subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're watching on Twitch, you can hit the follow button over there. Next scheduled live stream is as usual Tuesday next week. What I will be doing, I have no idea. Do you have a good idea? Well, let me know. Um, there might be some bonus live streams. I don't know. I do those whenever I have some time. And yeah, as always, as Stunkle always now spamming the chat with links. If you want to, there are also links down below where you can either do one-time donations like Warmerstein did today. Thank you very much, by the way. Or you can uh, join the channel and support on a monthly basis on Patreon. There's also a link for the merch store where you can buy merchandise like the mug I have here. Yeah, and no invisible paint, but it's just green and green screening doesn't work well. T-shirts, hoodies, mugs, all that kind of kind of stuff. Go down, check it out. There might be something you like. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little more casual stream today. Um, yeah, is there anything else I forgot? We have Discord, Patreon, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Yeah, okay. Until next time, I'll see you guys in space. <laughs>